Today, we're going to be talking about whether or not choosing bioengineering is the right path for you. And if you're aiming to have a great career, picking the right major is obviously really important. But here's the thing. I'm not going to give you a laundry list of 50 items that you need to check or pros and cons to help you make a decision because I don't think that's what you really need. What you need is this. I've been in industry now for more than 10 years working in pharma and medical devices. I've held a bunch of different roles in those capacities. And what I have discovered is I'm grateful that I did choose bioengineering, but if I could go back and do it over, what I would change is maybe the approach in which that I chose bioengineering. And so in this episode, I'm going to go through some advice that I have for the high school student who's considering bioengineering or the early college student who is considering switching to a major of bioengineering and my thoughts on that topic. So stay with me. Now, first things first, I did want to address BioE versus BME because I know different colleges have different programs. You might hear these terms thrown around as if they mean the same thing. And for me, I think they do mean the same thing. But there are some uh, bit of nuance that I think are worth discussing. Bioengineering typically is more of a broad uh, major and includes things like medical devices to agriculture, to pharma, to food applications, to environmental, whereas biomedical is really focused on medical devices and healthcare by and large. And some of the subspecialties within biomedical are usually things like tissue engineering, neural engineering, et cetera. From a practical standpoint, in my experience working in medical devices and pharma, I've never really heard anybody balk at like, oh, you're BioE or oh, you're BME. And so I think the nuances don't really matter as much probably in industry as they do in something like academia. So in the industries that I've worked in, like medical devices and pharma, the line to blur as far as BME versus BioE. So whether you decide to do BME or BioE, you're likely working in similar companies on similar projects. So for the intents and purposes of this episode, I'll just use them interchangeably to help keep things simple. And there's very likelihood that the university that you plan on going to anyways offers both with like a juice to squeeze ratio of is the you know, is the BME more important than the university or, or is it is whichever major is available at the right university that I want you know, the more more important consideration. Now, like I said before, if I had to summarize the main takeaway of this video, it's whether you choose to study bioengineering or not matters far less than how you approach it. And so I know I said I wasn't gonna go through a laundry list. I am gonna go through some pros and cons of studying bioengineering. And I did wanna go over sort of my own personal journey after 10 years in the industry and maybe some practical advice for you to understand your mindset, the experiences that you seek out and the skills that you develop along the way really help shape your success in the field. So I studied bioengineering at the University of Illinois in downtown Chicago, UIC. And you know, since studying bioe, like I said, I've held multiple roles in pharma and medical devices. I'm of Arab background. So the idea of going to medical school was implanted to me, implanted into me probably genetically or at birth. And that was the plan. I started out as a chemical engineering major, pre-med. Chemi was because my father, who had passed away a few years earlier, he was a chemical engineer, and so I wanted to carry that uh, forward and pay homage to him while also sort of scratching that pre-med, that, med that medicine itch. And what ended up happening is my first year in Chemi, I did this like cadaver lab visit so that I could get excited about going into medical school. And... I just found it really unappealing and found out that I'm way queasier than I thought I was. And it was just like a situation where I went into it excited about medicine and I walked out of that cadaver lab thinking, I need to change my entire life around. I decided to continue chemi for a little while. I'm like, maybe I'll just be like my dad and do that. And as I was going through some of the coursework, talking to professors, talking to other students, I was just like, I'm not really excited about this. I, I don't want to become a process engineer and work on coatings or seals or try and go and become a petroleum engineer or whatever. 
And so I had been excited in food engineering. And so I decided to switch to biochemical engineering, which was still under uh, chemical engineering, but looking at it from a different point of view. And I just found that I was really excited about medicine still, but I didn't want to be a doctor. And so bioengineering is where I landed. I made the switch first semester of my sophomore year, and it was definitely the right choice for me. And it, it also helped that I didn't have to take orgo and PCHEM anymore, even though I did have some pretty difficult uh, classes in bioe. So that's what ended up happening with me. And I found BioE to be a really engaging course of study. One thing that people say about it is that it's interdisciplinary and you really get that, I think, different from chemi or EE or something like that, where it's a lot more established of a major and you have 50 or 100 years of, of curriculum behind it. So uh, I always talk about this as far as a uh, life philosophy you have to look at some of the things that are not going to change or are not going to change for a really long time. And what I mean by that is by the year 2050, the number of people that are expected to be over 65 years old is going to double. And therefore, the demand for innovative care solutions, innovative medical devices, innovative pharmaceuticals is only going to increase. And that includes whether you're going to be developing them, manufacturing them, commercializing them. So the field of bioengineering is in an upward trajectory. And I was able to pull up some um, statistics from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. And the employment of bioengineers and biomedical engineers is expected to grow by 7% from 2023 to 2033, which is faster than the average for most other op occupations. That growth is fueled, obviously, by, like I said, the need for more advanced medical devices, personalized medicine, innovative innovations in healthcare, wearable devices, AI-driven diagnostics, and a bunch of other things. And the, it, it, there are competitive salaries, according to the labor of the according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the median annual salary for BioEs was in the six figures, one hundred thousand seven hundred and thirty, as of May of twenty twenty three, and in twenty twenty two alone, there was more than thirteen thousand degrees given to bioengineers in the U.S. And so the big picture is that bioengineering has, I think, a really strong outlook as far as career potential. Now, in terms of pros and cons, we'll start with the pros. I think the pros of studying BioE is that you do have diverse career opportunities, even though they're funneled into a handful of different fields. You can work in software if you study bioengineering. You can work in uh, for a hardware company. You can work for uh, a medical. You can work for a hospital system. You can do service. You can do design. You can do development. You can work in pharma or medical devices. You can be doing testing. There is a lot of things that you can do with with bioengineering in biotech, healthcare, academia, pharma, medical devices. I think what I personally really enjoyed, and I think we are going to be moving towards a more generalist kind of economy where the people that know how to put things to my podcast, Let's Combinate, is about combining medical devices and pharma. But what I really like to do behind it is looking at other areas of opportunities. And sometimes the most elegant and simple solutions is just to take two things and put them together. And so the interdisciplinary the interdisciplinary culture that you see in bioengineering more than other majors, I think is really great and something that I personally really enjoyed. There is high demand in the sectors that we talked about. There's strong earning potential. You can do graduate study. And it's one of those majors that if you do plan on going to, whether it's medical school, pharmacy school, PA school, dentistry, there is this concept of the innovator physician, the physician scientist who can not only diagnose and treat, but can also develop the tools of the trade and uh, that in a few different, a few areas, particularly around surgery. And, but you see it really across the board where you have physicians who are also folks who can develop products. One thing is that the global applicability. And I think that a lot of times like civil, it's hard to be, uh, 
In my experience, a lot of the stuff that's done in the U.S. is done under local, state, federal municipalities. There's a lot of tie with the government, whereas with medical devices and pharma, most of the companies are global. So you get that perspective a little bit more. Now, some of the cons of biomedical engineering, the first one is just around engineering in general is obviously there's high academic demand, not an easy major. I experienced this personally. I know some others uh, have as well, but the entry level positions may require you to get additional certifications, try and find internships or have advanced degrees. So I do think that getting that after you get your first role, it's pretty much smooth sailing and you can find a pretty solid career in with bioengineering as your major. But getting that first one, I have found pretty difficult. You have less defined of a career path. Uh, if you look at civil engineering, I like to think of it as the science of building, so to speak. Those types of industries like civil, they have very defined career paths. They have certifications that have been around for literally decades. Whereas a lot of that is newer to folks in medical devices and pharma. And there's a good to that and a negative to that if you're really looking for something that has a very defined career path. It's highly regulated, which I think surprises people. For me, at least when I came into medical devices, that was my first job out of college. I was like, I'm going to cure cancer. I'm going to help develop the next cutting edge medical device. And it was just like slog of development, how slow it is. And I, I've personally learned to love that. But if you're not going to be excited about getting into a, a highly regulated industry, it's just a consideration that you need to have going into it. That's how it's going to be. And it's probably going to be, it's probably, while there is intensity behind the work, the advancement of programs from concept to launch, those timeframes are typically a lot longer than say a consumer product or an electronic. And so those are the cons as far as choosing bioengineering. And so I think the people that should choose bioengineering by and large against, I don't want to put people in buckets, are the ones who are comfortable with an undefined path, like the cutting edge healthcare technology. And the people that shouldn't are the ones who really want who have discomfort with ambiguity, not interested in working in regulatory environment, prefer traditional engineering in a well-defined path. Now on to the important part, how to study bioengineering in 2025. Like I said in the intro, I don't think that it's as important as it once was, whether or not you select bioengineering, chemical engineering, what have you. It's not just about acing your classes. It is about preparing yourself for a field that is competitive that's fast paced and that's constantly changing. Of course, you need to learn the technical skills that are outlined in the engineering courses. But what I wish I did and that I advise everyone to do is to obviously do well on your exams and your book smarts, but really spend time with the MATLAB, with the SOLIDWORKS, with the lab view because those are going to be the things that really set you apart. But th those are the things that make you, I think, a, a competent technical engineer. And whether it's programming in Python or using some of the programs that I mentioned before for 3D rendering in that, I think that's really important. And if you're not getting that in some of your coursework, getting that through paying for courses on Coursera or YouTube, being able to learn to teach yourself skills, I think is, is really critical. Now, one other thing that I think is really interesting that my friend uh, Chuck Ventura mentioned on a podcast a, a year or two ago was two things. One was that people should have a really good understanding of basic stats. And so setting yourself up with, like I said, whether it's a free course or going through YouTube or taking a stats course as an elective engineering stats, that is, will really help set you apart. Outside of that, people really struggle to network, and I do wish that colleges did a better job of helping people career plan, use LinkedIn, and stuff like that. But one other tip that Chuck had was that if you are a sophomore in college, really get to know the juniors and seniors, because those are the people that, that are going to help you get entry-level roles. It's typically not the director, seniors, directors, and VPs who are going to help you get an engineering technician or like an engineering engineer one entry level role because they're like far 
removed from those details. It's typically the person that saw you a year or two ago that's going to be close to knowing when those kinds of roles are coming up. So get to know your upperclassmen. It, it could be really helpful. I do think also just getting comfortable with the cold reach out on LinkedIn and just having a really strong pitch for why somebody should talk to you and just recognize that, hey, most people are not getting constantly bombarded by students who are eager and trying to learn about people's day-to-day -day activity. It, it, it's probably a lot more likely that you'll get a response from somebody from a cold reach out than you think. And yeah, I think the reality of studying bioengineering in 2025 is that I think it's one of those situations where it's never been easier to get ahead, but at the same time, it has never been easier to fall behind. And between social media and online distractions and busyness of life, staying focused is really critical. Set goals for yourself, whether it's learning Python basics over the course of three months or attending a networking event or saying, I'm going to message 10 people on LinkedIn to try and get on the phone with them to understand what they do day to day, what they do day to day by building your technical skills, nurturing your networking, trying to understand what are the things that matter in industry. If that's where you want to end up combining all of those things will help you if you do pick bioengineering. And if you have any questions or need any advice about that, feel free to reach out to me or use the website contact me form. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you enjoyed this episode and happy 2025.